For too long have you sat dormant. For too long have you sat neglected, rotting away in the corner. Rise, my creation. Rise and be reborn. Oi, I'm Louie Jessup. You can probably tell when we work on the XR in this video. In this video, I will get this thing running, tear apart the motor, see what's going on, get her all sealed up, take it for a rip. So as you, you may not remember, but I raced this thing once and I, that was one race I forgot my chest mount. Um, so I just did like the race report on it. I'll show that up somewhere in, in the sky. But uh, I was running great. I, I, I was almost got a top eight with this old 86 XR200. Best finish I would have gotten all year. My one goal for this bike was to smoke PJ on an official race with this thing. It can do it. Uh, on the last lap, it ceased to move forward. And I noticed there's a ton of oil everywhere. So I think the clutch got smoked. And I thought it, it died. I, think I, I thought I blew it up, but... When I was moving houses, I noticed that the spark plug wire just kind of, it was so corroded, just kind of, boop, popped out. So, uh, that might have been why it stopped running. But we're going to tear into it. I've got a lot of parts I'm going to throw at it. I've got new seals, because the, the counter shaft was leaking, and the shifter. Gaskets. I've got a new clutch. Thank you, Colton, by the way, for buying that clutch. I've got a crankcase breather, some high performance valves, uh, valve springs, yeah, racing springs, some oil, some brakes, air filter, and some piston rings. Let's get her apart, shall we? So you may be asking yourself, Brandon, why are you working on your old XR when you've got the KDX that runs perfect? Well, this winter, I'm taking the KDX apart. Um, I want to get the cylinder replated, but I don't want to give up riding. So I want to ride this while that's shipped off and waiting for it to come back. That's why. And plus, it's cool. It's old XR. Oh, there. Yeah. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fix these seals. I've got the counter shaft seal and the shift seal I'm going to replace. There we go. Voila. Now a little bit of grease can go a long way. So I'm just going to lube her up, make her seal real good. Because you don't want to keep that precious oil in there. Yeah. Once your fingers are all nasty, you just take it, you put her back on. You just send her home with a socket and a, a hammer device thing, a smackaroo. All right, that's one seal. The rest are pretty much the same, so I'm just gonna replace them all. So I've done the shift seal, the Kickstarter seal, um, this little like valve depression seal, counter shaft, and now I'm gonna open up the clutch. There is a clutch seal up top, but you can't really pull this rod out without the cover off. So just pulling it off, and I gotta do the clutch anyway, so. Two birds, one stone. Mmm, clutch. Oh my gosh. I found where my clutch went. Look at this. Ugh. That's bad. That's real bad. Yeah. Oh my gosh. But look at that metallic shiny thing. I had to bust out the big guns because things are about to get violent. <clears throat> so I have never bought a new clutch for this thing. Yeah, she's wasted. Oof. I've just used clutches that were in the various engines that I've bought. All right, so while the clutch uh, soaks, I'm just gonna clean up everything that I can see. 
because I don't want no metal in my motor. No metal! Even though the whole thing's made of metal. No loose metal. Now we're going to pull off the top end to see what's going on up there. Hmm, they got good oiling up here. Nice. Perfect. A lot of the oil seems to have come out of this seal right here, so we'll get that changed out. Let's so figure out how to. Oh, this comes out. Yeah, that seal is shot. Probably like original from 1980, whatever, two or something. Yeah, check out this seal. It just like came apart. Uh, guess it got hot. I don't know. A lot of like melted rubber in here. My cam chain guy is broken. That's strange. So I pulled the chain guide off of this case that I had, but if you're on the, the East Coast and you're looking for XR200 parts, you're not gonna find them. I've got them all. I've got an engine. I've got another engine. I've got another engine. I paid like, I've never paid more than 150 bucks for an XR, so. And I bought two of them, one of which had two motors, and I bought another motor that one to be exact for 50 bucks why i don't know why use them on something yeah let's start putting this bad boy back together so while looking at a diagram for the this chain tensioner because i pulled all this apart um i found out i was missing this piece which is a little piece of plastic guide um i happen to have one so i put that in hopefully that helps also while looking at this jug, I noticed that there's this lip right here that needs to be filed down. Kind of goes all the way around. It's probably from not having this on there. So we're going to sand that down or file it down to get nice and flush. Yeah, the chain was slapping the jug. That's no good. And then we'll hone this bad boy up and slap her back on. Now I thought about using the angle grinder, but that probably wouldn't be that smart. Be a lot faster but i don't want to take this thing apart again all right so this is a dingle ball hone what you want to do is put some oil on it and then you hone your cylinder so go ahead and put it on the drill and Ta-da! Dingle ball hone. Get you one. So I'm putting it back together. I'm using um, an actual diagram to put it back because I don't want to forget a gasket like I did and have to go through all, all over again. Slide her on down in there. All right, so you see how one of these is slightly enlarged? This one to be exact. That gets an o-ring inside of it because oil runs up this stud at least i think it's this one could be this one but i'm pretty sure it's this one because it has that little marking on the cylinder Let me lift this up oh no chain you know go you're not going nowhere yeah it's the back one so oil comes up through here and there's an o-ring that goes around here so you put this on and you find an o-ring that fits there. All right, so I've got this tiny little o-ring tucked in here. Um, I've, seen, I've seen some diagrams with it. I've seen some without it, so I'm just going to use it. it. It's the same thickness as this gasket, so it's not going to have any harm. Whatever. So I'm back in the garage, and it is much colder. Uh, I let the clutch soak for a couple days, so I'm going to toss it on and slowly work on making this bench less a mess. Got the head over here. I was messing with that 
off camera just trying to figure out how the, the valve springs are different from the stock ones. But I am going to do is put the clutch on and the clutch cover just to make it all sealed up and stop dropping parts everywhere. So I'm going to work on that right now. Yeah, these clutch, everything in the clutch pack soaked for probably like three days. I don't even know when I was last out here. But it's nice and oily now, so we'll put them in there. I wiped everything down and made sure everything's all clean. Just like making a sandwich. Man, this, this clutch has so much more life than the last one. It's like we just skipped fall and went straight to winter. What the heck, man? Drop in these new heavy duty springs. Got it looking like a million bucks. Got to put a new gasket on, put the cover on, then we'll work on the top end while I'm freezing. Got her to seat down nice. The kickstart gear thing works and the clutch is in the right spot. All right, so I got one of the kibble white valve uh, sets on there. This is the stock and that's the new one. And here, are, here they are apart. You notice the kibble white has kind of more spacing between, between the spring. I don't know if it's stiffer, but it allows for more travel. And here's the stock one. These are wore out. I can compress them by hand. And these ones, I can, I can barely do them. Yeah, these are much easier to and the inside looks like a clutch spring. So if you look at, these are the old clutch springs. Hmm, Honda, what'd you do there? Whereas Kibboid has an actual two springs inside of it. Oh, the people at Mega Cycle Cam, they said to put some, put some good springs in this head. And uh, I never did. So uh, now I am. Gotcha. And to not launch these keepers in the outer space, I C-clamp the head down so I keep it nice and still. Tighten from the bottom of the head as well. Because if you tighten for the top, that makes the spring want to rotate. This one will just keep the keepers. Just compress it. And a magnetic screwdriver, just pull them out. Loosen it back. Not bad at all. So this kit comes with a new bottom as well. So you want to get out the old one. That's a little tedious. Then once you pull out this little bottom washer, you do it all in reverse. I hate compressing springs and angling them at my face. Don't know why. This gives me an uneasy feeling. Make sure your magnetic screwdriver has extra metal shavings on it. That's good, right? This is why PJ switched from four strokes to two strokes. Y'all don't remember, but he raced a, dang it, a uh, WR250. And 250H his first year. Whereas I have been faithfully riding that KDX. I haven't changed a piston that thing in like four years. That's what I'm going to do this year. Oh baby. It's all, this could be it. You flipped around the wrong way. How? Oh, oh, we got it. 
Now you just back off and hope they hold. Success. All right, let's get this head on. Part as far as keeping the chain in. I want to lose a glove for this. Oh, so cold. Okay, just cheat it in there. I got it. Screwdriver. Ouch. So this thing should be, um, this thing should be timed correctly just by feel. I've got it top dead center on the piston, um, just because it's like right there, and this thing is pointing straight up. So it should be top dead center, just by eyeball. I don't have any holes or anything, but I am going to double check it. The way you check it is on the actual valve cover, there's this little dip right here. Make sure that dot points at the dip and make sure this T is visible in the magneto cover. And that's how you know your top dead center. But I'm gonna finish putting this thing back together and I'll show you, I'll be back when it is finished. Well, I'm back. I've been super busy with school, had two tests I had to take. I did decent on them, by the way. Uh, Thanksgiving was busy, and now I'm able to work. So I've got a couple days. I'm going to throw this, finish throwing this thing together and get, a, get to rip it. Just got the motor all put back together. It's in time. Uh, when I put it on the bike, I will tighten that down to spec and, and uh, head bolts as well. So get that all tightened up. But I'm gonna go toss it in the bike. Just get in your home. Oh, that was easy. Wow. Well, all right then. Just fell right in. So everything is in. My goal for tonight is to get spark. So the boot, it kind of has this like screw thing that's inside of it. And it just kind of goes on the end of here. And what I did do is I cut off the end of this wire because it was very corroded. So I'm going to put this one on, screw it on, and see if we get spark. Isn't that hard to screw? Okay. Ah, oh. oh, the Kickstarter's not on it. Oh, great spark. Oh my goodness. Watch this bad boy. Ah. Great spark. What I'm gonna do now is get this thing in a shape where it can run. So we've got spark. I don't have any oil in it, so I've gotta put oil in it. Um, everything is tightened down. Every case is on. So we're just gonna get her buttoned up to where she can run. I probably have to clean the carburetor. Uh, but yeah, we'll put her back together. Got some good oil for once. Bought this back when I was working and wasn't just relying on the GI Bill. Good stuff. No, I man, this was get Rotella T, like everything else. Oh, we're gonna need a funnel. That's gonna make a mess. Mmm, good stuff. 
this end tape boot has seen better days, but we're gonna run it. See if she'll work. If, if not, I've got a spare, but. It's not all dehydrated gas. Oh, that's, it stinks. Yep, it stinks. Oh, the bolt looks fine. It just smells awful. So when I was tightening this thing, this just happened. So, uh, this boot's no good. It might have been the problem all along, too. Who knows? So many things was wrong. Get another one real quick. Be right back. This one seems to be in pretty good shape. We'll run that. It's got factory bolts. Perfect. All right, we've got gas. And now I've got gas. Um, I'm, I'm gonna give it a kick. Oh my gosh, that compression is ridiculous. Well, it seems to be timed perfect. I don't know. This ought to wake it up. Okay, so if you look in there, we are right at the fire mark. Now, when the piston goes up and it fires, that's when it shoots a spark. And after it fires, the piston should go down. It should come back up, exhaust stroke, down, and intake. But, so right now, after, after it fires, um, the intake opens, so it fires, and then black, back out this way it goes. Oh, so I got it timed 180 degrees off. Now, what did I say earlier? Yeah, I don't think so, bud. <laughs> you dummy. So I gotta pop this off, switch the cog. No, 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 yeah, switch the cog away around and it should be fine. Okay, so the crank is at the right spot, but, and the cam is in the right spot, but the sprocket is now pointing down, and it should be pointing straight up, so we'll fix that too. So now we just move the chain until this points up here. Right. Oh no, we do not want that. Get back on there, too. Oh yeah, we're good. We're good. Rip my pants? Oh, rip my sock. Ow. It's trying, it's really trying.
around the, the yard and it's way better than it's ever been. So, the XR. Being the bike that never fails to fail, it failed. The footage you're watching is kind of irrelevant, but I challenged Mike to a race. He's much faster than me, but I put him on the XR to level the playing field. And I was beating him. I passed him, caught him, passed him on the old KDX, and then the XR ceased to move. Um, found, come to find out, it lost spark, so no longer has a spark. She's just temperamental. And the little cam lobe right here is gone, and it fell into the motor. I guess it fell into the motor and bounced around for a short second, but it, you know, the motor spins freely. There's just this chunk of metal that was out of it. So, unfortunately, this is, <laughs> we're back where we started. Started with a dead bike and we finished with a dead bike. I got to ride it for a little bit. It was pretty quick. Yeah, that's how that's how things go, unfortunately. So for now, I'm gonna shelf this thing, and I'm gonna work on the van. But don't worry, I'll, I'll get her back. She will return. I gotta have a spare bike to ride while the KDX is down. But yeah, she'll she'll come around. Man, I tell you though, my luck, it's just my luck. So, to be continued for the XR. And hey, you know, if you enjoyed watching me build something, fail, and immediately have to rebuild it, that's kind of what happens in all my stuff. So, watch one of these videos. You won't be disappointed. Hope you guys have a great day. Stick around. There's going to be more fun stuff happening. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I had fun working on this thing. It will return.